morning. It's so nice to see everyone here today. I hope you're glad you're here. I am. Page 33 in your hymnal's Wonderful Savior. Page 33. And let's all stand. It's good to be able to say I can. we can do that. Let's all stand. 33. I have started out to follow Jesus every day, every hour I want to be. Just a little more like my blessed Jesus. He means more than all the world to me. Oh, wonderful, wonderful is Jesus. He gave his life on folders because I couldn't fit all the sermons I want to preach in my Bible. Amen. Who wouldn't be scared of that? That's the murder hornet. Would you love how they amplify it, magnify it? Just like the corona. Whenever they talk about corona, there's that big ball. We're supposed to know is the virus. Okay, now watch this. If you get on Google this, they put a murder hornet, because this is our next fear. This, we're going to miss two months of church because of this. They put a true story. They put a murder hornet and a praying mantis. Did you see this? The praying mantis grabbed the murder hornet and ate his head. Wasn't a mosquito, wasn't a sparrow, wasn't a snake, it's a praying mantis. I didn't know they're that quick, because when you see them, they're kind of like some of you. <laughs> then all of a sudden, this thing reaches out, grabs this murder hornet, and sucks his brains out and eats his head. I don't know where to start. <laughs> Let, let's, let's go over the basics. We're supposed to be distant, so I know that you have a brain. I'm not the government. I think you have a brain. So you do what you think you have to do. Don't be offended if we don't. I have all the paperwork from the governor. He used two words, recommend and consider. He said he wants us back in church to see how we'll do. If you want to wear a mask, wear a mask. 
but don't get offended if I don't. If I try to shake your hand, don't get offended. I forget. I've, this whole time, I'll bump into people. I'll shake. I'll hug. I, I don't want to get sick, but when this all hit eight weeks ago, I thought to myself, how many times have they been wrong about the weather? And if you just use common sense, we'll get through this. Nobody wants to get sick. We're not, we're not trying to promote. We, I just, you know, I was telling Amy on the way here, they're trying to take away the best thing that we have, fellowship. They're trying to rob us of that. So let's be smart. And I, how many of you... Some of you couldn't watch. Sharon, I heard you couldn't watch on live stream. So you just preached to Roger. <laughs> we, again, if you did not hear, we had a wonderful group of people who were here for every service. And they made sure that you, to the best of their abilities, that you could watch, that you could see, that you could think you're in church. And so again, I'm thankful for that. And we will at some point have a dinner so we can fellowship and honor them. But they did absolutely a fantastic job. Anybody can preach. Amen. <laughs> but to make me look halfway decent and to keep it so that you could get it and how th and we had a multitude of people watch. I'm still getting letters from people far away. Found, found your service. What a blessing. Please don't stop. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we ask that this morning we would have your peace. We ask that we would just see what you're trying to do and that we would not let go of what you've done in our lives in the past two months. May our church be stronger. We prayed at the beginning of the year that our church would be stronger. So make our church stronger. Help us to be smart. Help us to be wise. Help us, Lord, to use our common sense Help us to see that you're in control, you're in charge, you always have been. Nothing is just out of control, nothing is just chance. Lord, I pray for those who can't be here today, who want to be here. Bless their hearts wherever they're sitting. They can be just as blessed because of you. Yes, we wish they were here. Yes, we miss them. But Lord, we pray that this day will be a blessing to all of us because of you. When Paul wrote to the Thessalonians, he said that he wanted his word not to just be word, but he wanted it to be power and the Holy Ghost and much assurance and I'm asking you, Lord, to do that today. Bless the children, the teachers. Keep us safe. Keep us well. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. You can be seated. It's time to recognize the birthdays and anniversaries. Let me look here real quick. All right. For birthdays, Pat Patterson has a birthday. Anyone else have a birthday this week? All right. Anniversaries, Justin and Brittany Fish have an anniversary. Anyone else have an anniversary this week? All right, the next song, 42, page 42, Saved by the Blood. Saved by the blood of the crucified one, now ransom from sin. Oh, 
your conclusions are, I'm not here to argue with you. I'm not here to debate with you. But the bottom line is, they still don't know. And so, I have my opinions on it. If you've been tuning into the broadcast, you've heard my opinion. And, uh, nice weather we're having. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. I did not even once study for Sunday school. I didn't look at the last lesson. I just, I don't know. I don't know why. And then I pulled it out this week, the last lesson. And I thought it was so appropriate. I wanted to review, and so I studied ahead, and then nope. I said, I'm going to go backwards. Because I think the last one, which I taught on March 15th, was called A Better Plan Than God's. And there's so much in there, as I was reading through this again and studying the chapter, 2 Samuel chapter 4, if you want to join me there. I just want to review so that when we 
start charging forward again next week if, if the murder hornet lockdown doesn't happen. Amazing what the media can do, can't they? How about that? Everything that they predicted never happened. And they predicted this big snowstorm for the Northeast. And we keep believing it. 2 Samuel chapter 4. Let me read it. It says, And when Saul's son heard that Abner was dead, in Hebron, his hands were feeble, and all the Israelites were troubled. And Saul's sons had two men that were captains of bands. The name of the one was Baana, the name of the other was Rechab, the sons of Rimmon, a Beerothite of the children of Benjamin, for Beeroth also was reckoned to Benjamin. And the Beerothites fled to Gataim and were sojourners there until this day. Verse 4. Jonathan's son. I'm sorry, Jonathan, Saul's son, had a son that was lame on his feet. He was five years old when the tidings came of Saul and Jonathan out of Jezreel. And his nurse took him up and fled. And it came to pass as she made haste to flee that he fell and became lame. And his name was Mephibosheth. Verse 5, the sons of Rimmon, the Beerothite, Rechab, and Baana went and came about the heat of the day to the house of Ishbosheth. Aren't you glad for your name? Who lay in a bed at noon. He sounds lazy. They came thither into the midst of the house. We all got used to lay. We had to get up early today. Come to Sunday school. What's that about? It changes us, doesn't it? That's terrible. Verse 6, they came thither into the midst of the house as though they would have fetched wheat and they smote him under the fifth rib and Rechab and Ban and his brother escaped. When they came to the house, he lay in his bed in his bedchamber. They smote him and slew him and beheaded him. Yuck. Like a praying mantis and a murder hornet. That video is so cool. He took his head, got them away through the plain all night. Verse 8, they brought the head of Ishbosheth unto David to Hebron. Watch now. And said to the king, Behold, the head of Ishbosheth, the son of Saul, thine enemy. Tell you what, if you have enemies, you better not make them. If you have enemies, it better not because you're the enemy. I have enemies but not because I've made someone my enemy, it's because they've made me their enemy. Do you understand that? What are we supposed to do with our enemies? Hug them. I know you can't, but... Supposed to love them, right? Pray for them. These guys are bragging. Isn't that funny? They are saying, we took care of your biggest problem. Saul, we, we have the head of Ishbosheth, the son of Saul, thine enemy, which sought thy life. They're bringing up the past. Listen, David is over this. David is over this. When Saul pursued him, David never saw Saul as his enemy. Right? And they're, they're re... Amy said, can I make a suggestion today in church? I said, you want me to preach four sermons instead of five, don't you? She said, don't talk about the corona. I said, honey, how do we not? It's ruined our lives. You know how long it's been since I've eaten in a restaurant? I have to cook at home. I had to go to the store and buy food and, and act like normal people. And Amy and I sit at the table more often. She's been making meatloaf. I mean, she can cook. And it's changed our life, not for the bad, but it's time to move on. Right? 
time to walk down the sidewalk and say, I hope I don't get killed by a flying piano. Because that could happen too, right? And if all you did was dwell on it, you'd never leave. There's only one way you can escape the murder hornet. You've got to stay in your house. You can't open your doors, can't open your windows. I don't believe he can burrow through the side of your house, so you should be safe. But if you open the doors or you open the windows and he gets in, you're dead. Really? That's not our God, is it? And a lot of us have wrestled the fear. I think a lot of people, and we'll, we'll give you this story again. Stephen was in his office. Chief of detectives came to him and said, this whole thing's bothering me, man. I'm not sure I'm going to heaven. Stephen said, you can be sure. And Stephen led his chief of detectives in his office to the Lord. Is that worth it? Yeah. That's one amazing story. How many amazing stories are there that we don't know? God's not going to let anything get us. God's going to use everything. And we know that all things work together for good. We've had a two-month vacation. It's time to get back to work. <laughs> Bernadette has been working her head off. Been making Rex new dresses, tutus. They said, verse 8, that the Lord, see the last part of this, the Lord hath avenged my Lord the king this day of Saul and of his seed. In other words, God led us to do this. This is the kind of God we have. I've wrestled with that question. God, if you're so big, why'd you let all this happen? I'd rather die questioning God than anything else. I'd rather God say, you know, I couldn't take your foolishness. All you did was bug me and question me, but really no. Is God big? Did he make the heavens and the earth? And that big ball, that pepperoni, Kevin, did you call the pepperoni pizza the other night? You know, when they say corona, then they have this picture of that big bull. And it's a coronavirus amplified eight trillion times, and it's going to get you. God, if you made that virus, and you did, or allowed it, or wherever it came from, why? Why is it why, God, all these people dying? Why the panic? People out of work. You know what bothers me? There's 30 million people sitting home out of work, think they're non essential. Because of the flu. I'll stop. I'll stop. Let's move on. Be careful of what you think the Lord's leading you to do. Was that him? You think Abraham had this thought? He's standing over his son Isaac. Isaac's tied. He's on an altar. As soon as Isaac's dead, Abraham's going to light this fire and cook his son. Right? I'm not off, am I? I mean, I'm not off on this. So Abraham stands over him. I got a lot of yard work done. Did you? Our whole yard is transformed. I got painting done, yard work. I couldn't believe it. Anyways, Abraham, I haven't seen y'all in a while. The ten that come, are, they're so boring. They sleep. Abraham standing over Isaac with a knife. Do you think he thought, I hope that was God I heard. I hope that was God I heard. Have you ever doubted like that? And then a voice. Abraham! 
Abraham. Thank the Lord. Or maybe he texts someone, PTL. Thank you for your text, by the way. Thank you for your encouragement. You know the thing got the most response? How much do you weigh? I had people that have been watching us all over the country text me about that. I'm thinking, Amy will say they hear everything you say. Should we tell that story? It was Lisa's birthday. We, ten of us were here. I said, how old are you? I'm not really sure. She said, 20. So then I said, we're just, we pray. We were praying every time before the service, the live stream. So I said, how much do you weigh? She told me. I said, you're not supposed to tell me. I was just shocked. So then, huh? Nice weather we're having. <laughs> so then when I said that, I didn't get one woman who told me their weight. I got a lot of none of your businesses. <laughs> and some of you guys. Quit. Will you stay on track? Wow. And David answered. Do you ever have someone say this to you? The Lord said to me, I believe the Lord is leading me. How do you argue with that? In my years here, I've had people go, I believe the Lord's leading us away. What do I say? No, he isn't. I'm your new Lord. I don't argue with God. They came and said, look, we did this. This is God. This isn't us. So David answers. Watch his answer. David answered, recap, and Bana, his brother, the sons of Rimmon, the Berethite. And he said, as the Lord liveth. David is saying, I don't know who you're talking about. I'm talking about the one that's living now. As the Lord liveth. He said, who hath redeemed my soul out of all adversity. When one told me, he is relating back the story of the young man in chapter 1 who said that he felt he should kill Saul. David said, when one told me, saying, Behold, Saul is dead, thinking to have brought good tidings, I took hold of him and slew him in Ziklag, who thought that I would have given him a reward for his tidings. Verse 11, how much more? When wicked men, now wait a minute, they said, right? The Lord hath avenged you. What David call them? Wicked men. Who would you trust? These two guys or David? We've, we need to make sure who we're listening to. We, we, we need... Listen, so let, me, let me start harping since you're back. You've had the time, you should have been reading your Bible more than ever. Let me tell you, I did. It may not show, but I did. And I prayed more than I've ever prayed. That may not show, but I did. And I told the Lord, help me to continue this. Obviously, this is good and right. I want to know you. I want to know what you're saying. And these guys said, it's the Lord that's been in this. And, and David said, you guys are wicked said, you have slain a righteous person in his own house upon his bed. Verse 11. Shall I not therefore now require his blood of your hand and take you away from the earth? That's a gentle way of saying you're going to die. Take you away from the earth. What kind of talk is that? Who talks like that? My mom never said, you behave or I'm going to take you away from the earth. My mom said, you keep that up. You're, I'm going to kill you. I didn't have to wonder, what did my mom mean? When my mom, bless her heart, 
When my mom said something, she said, I'll, I'll strangle you, you blankety blank. That was my mom. David, verse 12. David commanded his young men and they slew them, cut off their hands and their feet. You know what they do in Turkey if you shoplift? Cut your hand off. You know what they do if you shoplift with the other hand? Cut that hand off. That kind of a deterrent. Isn't it? I wonder if there's just, I, I, I don't get all this. There's some of the Bible I don't get. Like all this gory stuff. At least when the praying mantis ate the murder hornet's head, there was no blood. Not that I knew of. Maybe the praying mantis was sucking it in. I didn't see blood dripping all over. But this picture, this, this, this is a, oof. It says he cut their hands and their feet off and hang them up over the pool in Hebron. But they took the head of Ishbosheth and buried it in the sepulcher of Abner in Hebron. God has a plan. And we have to be careful that our plan doesn't cancel his plan. And the whole point of this chapter is that God wants to teach us to be patient with him. Now, look, here's what I want to do. I want to pray, and I want to finish this. And I'm, I'm trying to use this to move into next week. And we might be, I, by the way, I checked when we started the study of David. December 2018. And now this corona has taken two months away from us, but we're going to get it. We're going to get it. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, show us your way. We have a way, God, and often we're stubborn. We want our way. We want to know why. We want to know all the answers, but you said we walk by faith, not by sight. And there are people in this room that need to be encouraged, and they need to be strengthened. And Lord, I'm glad for TV and computers and the fact that we can have church in a technical or technical, uh, you know what I mean, Lord. And I just hope that today as we're back together in person and as others are watching who can't be here or who are far away, may their lives be just totally blessed. Because of you, because of your word, because of, the, as David said, as the Lord liveth, he's a living God. That's what we want to experience today, the living God. And I pray this in Jesus' name, amen. We try to take matters into our own hands. When God wants us to give him time. I just want you to think a minute. I don't want to keep talking. I want, I want you to just, that needs to sink. God's never in a hurry. I always am. I want Him to work, change my life, change you, and I want Him to do it quick because if He changes you quick, it makes my job easier. So if He would just hurry up with you, meet your needs, solve your problems, We have to keep, I don't know if you remember this. 
We have to keep looking at God. Do you know this verse, John chapter 5, verse 39? Jesus said, search the scriptures. Listen now. See, you're going to quote it and say, oh, I know that verse. And that's the curse of not knowing him. We know words. The letter, he said, the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. And I want the spirit of the verse. So listen very carefully. He said, Jesus said, search the scriptures for in them. You think you have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me, Jesus said, of me. You may not have verses memorized, address, and word for word, but you know what he said. That's the key. And we have to be careful that we don't get so technical that we miss him. When I pray, I have a list or two. I don't want my prayer time to be a list. I want it to be I'm talking to the living God. I don't want it to be I need that, I need that, I need that, and I'm not against journals and all that. I'm not against prayer lists. But often we're going after an answer. He, he, God can do anything, can He? So God's goal is not to get you an answer. God's goal is to get you Him. The key to the Christian life is God, not what He said. John starts off his gospel, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Who knew the Scriptures better than anybody in the Bible? The Pharisees. Remember what Jesus said about the Pharisees? Snakes, vipers, hypocrites. I don't know if you do, but it was a long two months for me. And Amy would say, hey, you know what? I go, I don't want to hear it. Because it involved painting. I'd rather walk on a bed of nails. I, I don't know what it is. Hey, is there any way... Wait, I think I'm sick. Painting. Paintbrushes. Tedious painting. Hey, is there any way? No, there's no way. I mean, you can only study. I would say, I'm studying. Well, you don't have Sunday school? Well, I know, but hey, I got to study. That only worked for so long. I, I want God's will. But I don't want to wait. I want it now. Remember, did you hear me say, I knew we were going to be back in church by Easter? That was wrong, too. I ought to be a weatherman. Man, I thought for this whole thing, then they kept, you know, putting the spook on us. It's coming for you. I mean, it's just big numbers. Every time somebody died, just scared the fire out of us. So stay home. Hey, and by the way, if you're home and don't want to come, that's up to you. I'm not telling you you have to come. I think you should. I want to see you, but you do what you got to do. I don't see I, I don't see. I want you to know that this is me and not God. I don't see any point in waiting. None. Zero. I don't see. God does. 
I've been praying every morning. Psalm 27. I'm praying through Psalm 27 every morning. He says, The Lord is my light. Verse 1. I'm not going to read the whole thing. The Lord is my light. Isn't that good? The Lord is my light. When I need light, bright. the Lord is my light and my salvation. Then he says, Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And I said, Lord, I I want that. I, I want to believe that. Man, it goes on, verse 4. One thing he said, have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord. I said, Lord, I sure miss your house. Remember what Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. Verse 7, he says, here, O Lord, I have this one marked on my prayer list in red. It says, here, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me and answer me. And then the last verse, the last verse, the last verse. Psalm 27, verse 14 says, wait on the Lord. Wait a minute, I just prayed that he'd answer me. Verse 7 says, Hear, O Lord, when I cry. And now he says, Wait on the Lord. Verse 14, Be of good courage. He shall strengthen thine heart. Then he says it again. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Three things. Can't give you a handout. It's illegal. Recommended we don't. That one we figured we wouldn't do. So I'm not going to give you a handout. No bulletin. I, don't worry about it. We're going to just. Do you know how many people? This, let, this, let me say it again. Did you go to the grocery store? Do you know how many people touch everything you touch? Some of them sneeze in their hands and lick their fingers. Number one. Don't take matters into your own hands. Our way fails. David is learning to submit to God and wait for God's timing. This is very key. What I'm about to tell you is very key. It takes humility to admit that we aren't in charge. I'm not talking about the world. I'm talking about our own life. It takes humility. Remember we talked about Sarah, she couldn't wait for God's promise, so she told Abraham to sleep with the maid, and that didn't turn out very well. David reminded these guys in this chapter we read that, that yeah, you can say God led you to do that, and just like this guy that killed Saul or said he killed Saul thought he was doing me a favor, be careful. Be careful. I don't know what God's doing. I don't know why he's doing it the way he's doing it. I don't know why he works in my life the way he does. I don't know why. And sometimes I think, God, I know that you're not doing this for me. But sometimes we just need to make up our mind that we're going to trust God and not give up. You know the numbers you're not hearing? 
You're not hearing how many people have committed suicide. The suicide prevention hotline locally gets 15 to 20 calls a week. Since this all started two months ago, they get 15 to 20 calls a day. How come they're not giving us that number? Because they don't want us to know that they've scared the life out of us. And they didn't say, you're going to take this wrong. I should be careful, but why, why, why hold back now, right? You've got you to know me, and you've got to listen to what I'm going to say and how I'm going to say it. Because you, you, know, you know me in my mouth, but you know... Let me just say it. They tried to scare the hell out of us. But what they did was they scared the hell in us. They wanted us to doubt God. They, they wanted us to step back. Our governor did a very smart thing. In his new revised provisions for churches, he's quoting the Constitution. Do you know why? Because we have the freedom to exercise our religion freely. And when you tell someone, you stay home. There are dead. I mean, Attorney General Barr got up and said, y'all are out of line. It doesn't matter if you like him or not, think he's on Trump's side. Trump picked him. Of course he's on Trump's side. Who would, would you pick your enemy to run something? I don't understand this. Bar, bar is sharp. And by the way, it's going to get real ugly. They ho they're hoping the murder hornet turns up by the gazillions because the Democrats are going to have a bad week in a bad couple of weeks. You know that, right? You've kept up with all the lie. They caught him, General Flynn, who is a hero. You didn't think he's a hero because they labeled him as a liar. Never happened. Amazing what we believe. The devil can threaten me, but hell's not my home. And if you get scared to believe that, that, that see, it, to them it's all about whoever they are. It's all about scaring hell in you. Maybe, maybe, I, I had the thought, maybe the devil's in charge of this whole thing. And then I thought, you know what? He can be running it. What Joe think? Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. When all hell broke loose in his life. What did Joe think? And I don't use hell like they're using. I'm talking about, didn't he think this was demonic? And you and I know it was all God. Was the devil doing what God allowed him? Yeah. But it was all God. That's what we need to do. We need to fall back and look at this and say, man, God is already, more good's going to come of this than bad. And I got news for you. 30,000 people died last year from falling. How many of you trip and fall? I do all the time. 30,000 people a year in the United States. If you laid in your bed and thought about that, you'd never get up. God's not given us the spirit of fear. So we can't let hell dictate how we think, how we respond, how we act, don't take matters into your own hands. Number two, give God time. Give God time. This is what I admire about David. As a teenage boy, Samuel anoints him with oil to be king, pours oil over his head. You know what I would have done? 
I would have left home and went and got fitted for a crown. I would at least bought a plastic one and put it on and when everybody said, what are you doing wearing that? I'd go, you were there. Samuel anointed me. Get used to it. What David do? Went back to the sheep. Humility is a hard thing for some of us. David never kept grabbing at the throne. David never said, yeah, kill Saul, the throne's mine. David waited for God. And we studied, I was going to say a couple weeks ago, actually it's been longer than that. When David thought that the whole kingdom should be his, what God give him? Hebron, Judah. Sit still. Here's what I want. I want to trust God. But I want it to come because I push a button. I need trust. Boop. You know like a vending machine? You hit the button. What you, you see it. D4, you hit D4, whatever it is, Little Debbie. Little Debbie during quarantine became Big Deborah. Little Debbie gives you two peanut butter bars and you hit D4 and down they fall because that's what you wanted. You didn't want the machine to say, come back in a week. I want peanut butter bars, come back in a week. Takes time to learn to trust God. And over time, we see that God is faithful. We see not only is He faithful, but that we can let go and trust Him. That the Spirit of God in the fruit of the Spirit will give us patience. But these guys are so caught up in getting David on the throne that they ignore God, they ignore God's will, and they feel that the end justifies the means. However they can get there, they'll do whatever they have to do. That's not how this goes. Does God worry? So then it's not Christ-like to worry. Ouch. Ouch. I hate this too. I'm with you. I hate it. We want the promises of God, but we end up getting impatient. Number three. Don't take matters into your own hands. Number two, give God time. Number three, focus on God, not what he said on his promises. See, you're saying, you're telling me not to listen to the Bible. Not. I, I never said that. But when you read the scriptures, you need to see God. Don't just see these words. We read the Bible you know what we're looking for? I, I'm, I'm trying to quit. Just give me a minute. You know what we're looking for? We're looking for answers. Jesus said, John 17, this is life eternal. How many of you prayed a prayer and got saved? Did the prayer save you or did God save you? We didn't know that when we prayed the prayer, but we had to believe that it was him. Amy will send me texts. She's done it to some of you. I'm looking at this text. I'm going, I have no idea what that means. I talk to her all the time. I mean, we, listen to me. Crystal, how much time does the average couple talk in a week? 27 and a half. See, how'd she know that? Because her and Demiso talk two minutes. I'm just kidding. We, we had discussed this. The average couple talks 27 and a half minutes a week. I can get 27 and a half minutes out in five minutes. Amy and I talk a lot. Sometimes she'll send me a text. Maybe she's drunk. So I'll text back, question mark. Oh, 
she spoke it, you've done it. Now, I'm supposed to text when you drive, but it's okay to speak it and drive. So I said, you know what? Maybe you just need to take time and type it out. Because every time you speak it and send it, you're taking up twice the amount of time that I don't have. Now i got to decipher it, and then she resends it. It's like, that doesn't make any sense. One time she sent something to the kids, and it was a cuss word. And they text me, and they said, what's up with mom? I said, I don't know what you mean. What do you mean, what's up with mom? I'm going to send you the text she sent me. Okay. I'm like, Amy, what is this? I never said that. It's about knowing the person. Sometimes we can misconstrue God's word, can't we? So it's important that we read the Bible and we look for God. If I know God, then His promises are mine. Did the Pharisees know His promises? Yes, but they didn't know Him. They knew what He said. But they didn't know Him. Be patient with God. God will finish. He always finishes what he starts. I'm excited to see what God's going to do. I'm excited that God uses everything. Lost a lot of people. I thought he's a young man, 51 years old, sat back there. I led him to the Lord and baptized him. He had a Kurt Karaziski. He had a, a diabetic seizure. Gone. Man, I'm thinking, come on, Lord. The dad called me and said, hey, I know Kirk would want you to do the service, but we're going to wait. Would you do a service when this is all over? I said, absolutely. God's going to work. Hey, he loves you. If he died for you, he, he's going to work. We've got to get through all this. We've got to just trust him. Heavenly Father, please, as we gather this morning, help us to be wise and smart and keep us safe, keep us well, keep us healthy. But most of all, oh God, most of all, Work in our lives. Work in our spiritual lives. Teach us. Lead us. Stir us up. Help us to care about lost people. Help us to care about knowing you. Help us to care that we know God. Paul said that I may know Him and the power of His resurrection. That we may know God. I pray this. In Jesus' name. Amen.